The Trail of Tears started in the early 1800s. In 1820, the Cherokee had established written laws and a constitution. But when the government tried to take their land, they weren't ready to give it up. The Cherokee hired a lawyer to argue for them to keep their land. In 1835, the government persuaded a few Cherokee to sign a treaty giving up their land. Not all the Cherokee were ready to give up their land that fast. In 1838, General Winfield Scott came to remove the Cherokee from their homes. The Cherokee were forced from their homes and had to start a tragic journey to Oklahoma. By November, 12 groups of 1,000 Cherokees each were trudging 800 miles over the land to the west. There are five tribes involved in the Trail of Tears, such as the Cherokee and the Creek. Chief Blackhawk was the leader of the Cherokee Nation at the time. He tried his best to lead all his people to safety, but sadly, he failed. I, John Ross, led the Cherokee through a period of cultural change. I also became Chief of Cherokee Nation in 1822. Martin Van Buren ordered federal authorities to force the Cherokee from their homes and place them in a temporary detention camp. Cherokee remained at the camp for the extremely hot tropical southeast summer. Then diseases began to spread. The Cherokee were suffering from dysentery, measles, and whooping cough, and a sum of 2,000 had died. That October, 15,000 men, women, and children began a six-month, thousand-mile journey to an unfamiliar country of Oklahoma. After about half the journey, another 2,000 died from exposure, disease, and exhaustion. The Cherokee buried their dead along the route that became known as the Trail of Tears. The forced march became one of the most tragic and dishonorable chapters in the U.S.-Indian relations. Native's journey started in northwestern Georgia and moved 800 miles to east Oklahoma. They traveled through Tennessee, Kentucky, Illinois, Missouri, and Arkansas to settle in their new homes. Hi, I am the 7th President of the United States, Andrew Jackson. I signed a law to remove all natives from the southern states. This was called the Indian Removal Act of 1830. The Indian Removal Act, issued in 1830, granted the U.S. soldiers with the power to remove Native Americans from their homeland forever. In Ohio, the people's possessions were taken from their homes and sold at auctions for only a couple pennies. Sadly, after the Civil War, the Cherokee lost their government and most of their land. The Natives had to move again into reservations controlled by the government when the Whites started moving west. Today, there are many national parks along the route that the natives took. It was also to remember the natives that were lost and to tell the amazing but tragic story that made us who we are.